Ya. Yeah. Yeah. Morning, all. So before I start, can anyone please confirm whether my voice is clear, whether the screen is visible or not, right? Yes. Can anyone please confirm whether my voice is clear? Yeah, yeah, it is clear. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. fine so in the yesterday demo session right just i was briefing you about why python just let, let us have a quick review what we have discussed so python is a general purpose programming where any kind of applications we can develop right like automation applications web applications animation applications embedded applications desktop applications single user applications right and multi-programming features. What all the features we see in different other programmings, all the features we see in Python. It, it's a high level language. It's human understandable, it's portable and machine independent. Can run on all the hardware and all the operating system. It is interpreted line by line execution we are going to see, right? User friendly programming or programmer friendly programming which provides simple syntaxes, which looks like normal English. So there is no prerequisites. Who can learn Python means there is no prerequisites for learning Python. Anyone can learn Python. The Python statements looks like the normal English statements. How Python was built by taking the features from different other programmings has taken some advantages from one programming some other advantages from other programming in this way from multiple programming languages it has taken the advantages okay sir uh, one question yes uh, actually uh, is this is this course will cover python scripting also or else uh, there will be a separate uh, course for python scripting Yes, it will cover Python scripting also. Sorry? It covers Python scripting. Okay, okay. So Python scripting, uh, there will be no any other uh, separate course, right? So it there will include it. Yes, yes. So just now I'm, I'm, I'm briefing about it, right? So here, uh, there are two types of languages, low level and high level languages. Low level languages like assembly level language, they are not human understandable. They are not portable, machine dependent. They cannot run on all the hardware and all the operating system. But high level languages like Python, they're human understandable, they are portable and machine independent. They can run on all the hardware and all the operating systems. Python as See what we are going to discuss as part of it, right? Procedural Python has got what features? Procedural oriented programming features like C language. It has got object oriented programming like C, Java. It has got scripting features like shell script. It has got modular programming, right? Yes. So as part of the course, we'll be discussing like procedural oriented with programming with Python, object oriented program with Python, scripting and modular programming with Python. So this is what we'll be discussing, right? Modular programming with Python, scripting, object oriented programming with Python and procedural oriented programming, right? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Python has got a great boom today because of this modular programming. 89,300 inbuilt modules Python is providing for different domains, right? Whatever domain you have, whatever environment you have, Python is providing modules for networking, for testing, for data science, for big data. For every environment, it has got modules. And also, we are using, we are writing automation scripts in IoT, in, in DevOps environment, in robotics, right? Right. <clears throat> Previously, if you go back like 2010, the usage of Python was very less as compared with Java 43% usage, Python 3% usage, 
but from 2020, the usage of Python has increased right from to 31%. So currently, Python is the number one ranked programming with diversified number of applications. Yes. So I said thousands of modules it is providing for data science separate modules, right? Like NumPy, CP, Pandas, PyTables, Matplotlib, CP, Skikitlin, right? Even for big data like PySpark, for networking, for testing, for operating system, for each and every database, Python is providing a separate module to connect with the database. To connect with Oracle, separate module. Like CX underscore Oracle, for MySQL, PyMySQL, for SQL Server, right, PyODBC. And for each and every file format, to read data, to write data, to create the files, to create Excel files by writing Python code, to create PDF files by writing Python code, CSV files, JSON files, XML files. Just by writing Python code, we can just create these files, we can read from it, we can write to it. And for mathematical operations, math model, for statistical operations, for generating graphs, any type of graph, normal graph, bar graphs, histograms, scatter plots, stack plots, right? Yes. And what kind of applications are we developing today by using Python? Mostly used in creation of web applications. We have got a framework like Django framework. Python is providing a framework Django. It has got its own database, SQLite 3. So the main, so web applications creations with Python, right? At a rapid speed, we can create a web application using this framework. It has got its own application server. It has got many flexible features. It creates its, uh, all the code will be generated, which is required for the project. .py files will be created, right? And the automation applications using technologies like DevOps, IoT, data science, the total implementations goes in Python. Data science, that is machine learning. So to implement all the machine learning techniques, we require a language. Python is the mostly chosen language for implementing this ML techniques, where Python is providing many plottings, visualizations, data analysis, right? Modules for it. And even for big data environment, for a huge data like the terabytes or petabytes of data, today like petabytes of data is getting generated from the main, from the many like the uh, social media like uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google, all is generating data in petabytes. For handling that huge data and crossing them, we have got uh, technologies, big data technologies like Spark, and it, which is implemented using Python, we call like PySpark. And for scientific applications, we have got CP, scientific Python. For numerical analysis, we have got NumPy, numerical Python. And for graphical user interface, for graphics and for animations, we have got TK Intermodule. For gaming or game development, we have got PyGame. And other another framework like PyCora, right? These two frameworks for developing games in Python. And PySci for 3D games and for scheduling tasks and for testing out for test cases for software development software developers make use of python as a support language for business applications for developing e-commerce systems python is one of the best choice database applications where any web applications require a database python can connect with any database right for networking applications Separately for networking applications, especially Python providing a framework like Twisted Python and for web scrapping, scrapping data from different sites like Flipkart, Amazon, right? And for CAD, 3D CAD applications, computer data designing, right? But for audio and video applications, we use Python today, like C Play, Team Player are some of the examples where Python is preferred in this developing audio and video applications. Embedded applications, the most famous embedded application, Raspberry Pi, which uses Python for its computation. Computer vision for color detection, face detection, and for object detection, right? And for data analysis, 
and for desktop applications, single user applications, right? Python is used. So these are the various applications where Python is mostly preferred. Who are using Python today? Which companies are using Python? And top most applications built using Python. Google using Python for its web search systems. Google is one of the best example of Python web application. YouTube using Python for its video sharing service. Yahoo using Python. Instagram using Python. The main reason for Instagram for choosing Python is Python multi-programming features. Uber, Uber pricing algorithm implemented using Python. NASA using Python for its research and development activities because of Python hybrid features. Quora, Reddit, Pinterest are the applications developed using Python. The topmost OTT platform like Netflix. Netflix using Python for its security automation and subscription related things. MMOG, massively multiplayer online games. Maya, a powerful 3D animation which uses Python script. BitTorrent using Python for its file sharing service. iRobot for military and commercial operations, right? And for hardware testing purpose, companies like IBM, Seagate, Qualcomm, all these, they use Python for hardware testing. Reasons which makes Python suddenly super popular, right? What are the reasons which makes Python super popular? See, very less coding. Very less coding we see, right? Very less coding we see in Python. Not even one-fourth coding as compared with other programmings. Simple syntax is given by Python, which looks like normal English statements. Interactive mode given by Python, which statement by statement we can interact with Python. For every statement, it gives response. This kind of interaction we won't see in other programming. Multi-programming features. What all the programming languages, right? Available, all the features we see in Python. Wide varieties of applications, any kind of applications we can create. Just now I was briefing you about the various varieties of applications. Many built-in libraries, thousands of models Python is providing for different domains, right? Okay. Now, that is what we have discussed, right? So, now, today I discuss about... Uh, Python software foundation, Python versions, Python installations, Python execution mode strategies. Before we go, you need to know something about Python software foundation, PSF. Python software foundation. PSF. It's a like PSF, right? Python software foundation, PSF. You need to know something about it. So PSF, it is a non-profit organization, right? Devoted towards Python community. It is a non-profit organization devoted towards Python community. It was launched in the year. It was launched in the year 2001. The main objective of this Python Software Foundation, PSF, to foster the development to foster the development of Python from version to version, right? Right. In the year 2005, PSF, Python Software Foundation, received Computer World Horizon Award, right? Computer World
the president for this right the president right gudo van rosam gudo van rosam the personality who developed python the personality who introduced python and who developed python right the same personality is the president for this psf yes headquarters where are the headquarters of it right headquarters delaware us official website official website right yes python.org official website python.org right yes so this is something about python software foundation the president like Gudo van rosum headquarters delaware official website python.org to foster the development of python it was launched in the year 2001 and before we go with the installation you need to know something about the python versions the first python version python 1.x version it was released in the year 1989 Next, Python 2.x version. 2.x means, see, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, right? But the first two version was released in the year 2000. Next, Python 3.x. Python 3.x version, right? 3.x version. 3.x version was it was released in the year 2008 python 3.x latest version of python latest version of python Latest version of Python, right? Yes. Latest version of Python, Python through point twelve. This is the latest version of Python, right? Yes, 3.12. Stable version of Python. Stable version of o Python. Python 3.10. Python 3.10, right? It's the stable version. Stable version, nothing but mostly used version. Mostly used version, yeah. right? Yes. Yes. Latest version of Python. Stable version of Python, right? Mostly used version. Python 1.x, 2.x in the year. That is the version what we are using currently is 3 version. Latest version is 3.12. Stable version is 3.10, mostly used version, right? So we'll be installing this Python 3.12 version. We'll be installing this Python 3.12, right? So Python installation hardly takes one minute, right? So before I install, 
apps. Yeah, Python, right? I'm uninstalling this Python here. Python 3.2. So Python provides different software for different environments, right? Like Windows for Windows, for Linux, for Mac OS. For Linux, no need of any special installation. By default, Python will be Python will be installed. So there is no separate installation for Python. Python comes as inbuilt. Python comes as inbuilt within the Linux OS. We no need to install Python in Linux machine, right? But in Windows or in Mac OS, we need to install Python. Right. So again, in Windows, Python provides two softwares for Windows environment, for Windows 32-bit and for Windows 64-bit. Mostly we have got 64-bit currently, but if your system has got 32-bit OS, we need to download 32-bit Python software. Yes. How will you check whether your OS is 32-bit or 64-bit? Go to this explorer. Go to this file explorer. Yes. What it is saying? 64-bit operating system. 64-bit what? Operating system. If it is 64-bit, we need to download 64-bit Python software. If it, it shows 32-bit here, we need to download 32-bit Python software, right? Yes, uninstallation is completed. Right, now just open this Chrome browser, right? Open this Chrome, right? And just say python.org, www. What is the official website for Python? Python.org, just enter. Downloading Python. Go go to downloads folder. All releases. Downloads all releases. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Right, yes. Scroll down, right. Don't go for active releases. Looking for a specific release. Looking for a specific release. Looking for a specific release base. Python 3.12. Python 3.11, right? Click this 3.12. Yes, it was released on October 2, 2023. Almost two months ago, right? Click this 3.12. Click this 3.12 and scroll down to the bottom of the page. Scroll down to the bottom of the page. Windows installer 64 bit. Windows installer 64 bit. And here you can see for Mac OS 64 bit universal installer. Mac OS 64 bit universal installer and this is for Windows 64 bit, right? If your Windows is 32 bit, just download is 32 bit. Windows installer 64 bit. Click this Windows installer 64 bit. Your yeah, download is started. Can you check here? Yes, download is started.
Yes. You know, see here. Download is finished. Yes, Python 3.12, 25 MB of size. Can you see this 25 MB of size, right? Download is completed. Now click that exe file, click that exe file, right? You will get this window. You get this window, right? This window gets opened. Don't immediately go for installation. Don't immediately go for installation. At the bottom, you can see add Python to path. Add Python to path variable of OS. Select it. Add Python to path. And go for customize installation. So here nothing to select. Everything are selected. Documentation, pip, ideally, right? Just to say next. Here also nothing to select with everything are selected. So here, see the installation location. Installation location, where it is getting installed by default. In C, users, tell, app data, local, programs, Python, Python 3.12. In somewhere in some subdirectories, it is getting installed. Tomorrow, if you want to locate Python, where exactly it is installed, right? So you need to enter this very big path. Tomorrow, if you want to install any modules, we need to enter this big path. <clears throat> so remove this big path, just install Python and C drive. So keep your mouse before this Python 3.12. Just remove this, remove this big path. D slash. Python 3.12. Python 3.12 is nothing but 3.12. A folder with this name will be created automatically. Within this, Python will be installed. Just to say install, just say install, right? Only it takes 30 seconds to install this Python. Yes, once, it, yes, it's almost completed. So once it gets installed, right, let us check whether it is properly installed or not, whether this Python is properly installed or not. Okay. Setup was successful, right? Yes, setup was successful. Close this. Okay. At the bottom search panel, at the bottom left corner search panel, right? Type CMD. And say enter to go to the command prompt. And here just to type Python. And if you say enter, it has to display the Python version. It has to display the Python version. And Python interpreter has to be opened. Python say just say enter Python 3.12 the Python version and can you see the three arrow symbol? Python interpreter gets opened. Here you can type any valid Python statements and you can interact with Python. 
like that. 4 plus 3, 23 into 32. It use response for every statement. x equal to 10, y equal to 5, x value, what is y value, what is x plus y, x minus y, x into y. So simple Python statements, right? Don't need to define the data types also. Directly we can provide the values. X plus y, x minus y, x by y, x into 2, 10 into 2, x to the power of this power symbol, 10 square, 100. x equal to hello. x into 3, prints hello for 3 times, x into 5, prints, sorry, x into 5, right? Prints hello for 5 times. So here, if you want to come out of this, say quit. Some sort of it, right? Yes. So Python is installed, right? It is working fine. So if anyone, for Linux, no need of any installation. By default, Python comes as inbuilt within this Linux machine. But if anybody wants to install the latest version of Python in your Linux machine, just to go with this command, right? Yes. So everything we'll do from the root user. Right, so sudo iPhone get install Python 3.12. This command will automatically download and install Python. Python 3.12. This is going to download and install Python right in the Linux machine. Yes. Now Python execution modes. Python execution modes. Two modes of execution. Two modes, right? First one, interactive mode. Interactive mode means just now I said, right? Statement by statement, we can interact in this way. Statements by statement, x into y, x by y. And for every statement, it is giving response. It is what we call interactive mode, which is not supported in other programming languages. Here, we directly type. Here we directly type Python statements on the interpreter and the user can easily and the user can easily interact. We directly type Python statements. And the user can easily interact with Python statement by statement. Okay. Advantage. What is the advantage, right? If you doesn't know about any Python functionality, you can just type here in the interactive mode and check what output it is going to provide. So advantage is to test the functionalities of Python. To test the functionalities of Python and to learn Python and to learn Python to test the functionalities of Python and to learn Python. Yes. Second mode is like, second is like batch mode. Batch mode, right? Here interactive mode can't be used for developing applications in Python. Only to test the functionalities of Python and for learning Python. This interactive mode works better for batch mode. For developing applications in Python, we go for batch mode. Here we write 
here we write set of statements here we write set of statements within the editors or ids within the editors or ids integrated development environments right within the editors or ids and save it by using dot py extension dot py extension and later submit it to python and later submit it to python so here we write set of statements within the editors or ids and save it by using dot py extension save it by using dot py extension and later submit it to python okay what are the various editors where we can write the python code what are the various editors like notepad various editors right example like notepad within the notepad you can write the python code and create a dot py file edit plus within the edit plus also we can write the python code and create a dot py file these two are for windows environment yes vi editor nano editors right these two are for linux these two are for Windows environment. These two are for Linux environment, right? Yes. Yes. These are the various editors where we can create dot .py, right? And what are the various IDs? Various IDs where we can write the Python code. Integrated various IDs where we can write the Python code, right? Like... Uh, we have got many IDs Python supports, right? Yes. Like PyCharm. PyCharm. PyDev. Komodo. Spider. Eclipse. NetBeans. Jupyter Notebook, right? VS Code, right? VS Code. So various ideas like PyCharm, PyDev, Commodore, Spider, Eclipse, NetBeans, Jupyter Notebook, and VS Code. <clears throat> Among all these, PyCharm is the mostly used ID, right? Mostly used one. You may ask why this many IDs for Python? Why not one or two? So as Python is used in different environments, different environments use different IDs. Like for example, data science, which uses Jupyter Notebook and Spider. Big data also using Spider and Jupyter Notebook. And for typical web applications, PyCharm is mostly preferred. VS Code is preferred, right? Yes. Absolutely. So these are the various IDs. So I'll be discussing about these IDs, right? How to download, how to install, how to run the code and execute the code on these IDs. In real time, we use these IDs, right? Yes. For writing the Python code and executing the Python code. Not on one ID, like others. I'll be discussing on many multiple IDs. PyCharm, VS Code, Jupyter, Spider, all these, right? Yes. Developing the first Python application. Developing the first Python application.
open notepad and type the following python statements open notepad and type the following python statements as of now we didn't discuss anything about python so just i'll take uh, two values x as 10 y as 4 y equal to 20 perform some kind of arithmetic operations like addition subtraction x plus y x minus y x into y x by y addition subtraction multiplication and division open notepad and type the following python statements Okay, I'll copy this code. I'll copy this code to a separate notepad file. So I'll copy this to a separate notepad file, right? And I'm pasting here. Save with the dot .py extension, right? So I get it in the C drive Python 8 AM batch, right? Within the time saving it has sample one dot py dot x. Okay, save as sample one dot py extension. Save as sample one dot py. Now submit this file. Now submit this file. Python as. Now submit this file to Python as. Right. Go to the command prompt. Just type Python. Just type Python and just specify the path where the file is available within the C drive. Within the C drive slash Python 8 AM batch is the folder. Within the C drive slash Python 8 AM batch slash sample one dot py dot py. Yes. The file name in which folder it is present, the folder name and the drive. The drive in which drive and in which folder and the file name, right? Submitted to Python. Say enter. It gives the output 10 plus 20, 10 minus 20, 10 into 20, 10 by 20. Yes. Okay, so the file name, the folder, and this drive, everything submit to Python. This is what the output. Here, what is your observation here? What is your observation here? Here, we are writing the code. We are writing the code at one place. And executing at the, executing at the other place. But to write and execute, but to write and execute at the same place, to write and execute at the same place. We are writing the code at one place. Where you are writing? Within the notepad and executing at the other place. Where? And within the command prompt. Writing at one place, executing at the other place. But to write and execute at the same place, we have IDLE, we have IDLE, Integrated Development Learning Environment, which comes along with Python installation.
we have ideally which comes along with python installation but to write and execute at the same place we have ideally which comes along with python installation using which we can write and execute using which we can write and execute at the same place. So what is this ideally integrated development learning environment? and how to write the code and execute the code within fingers. Same the bottom type, I, D, L, E, and select this Python 3.21. Ideally, Python 3.21, what? Click it, Python shell gets opened in this way. Python 3.1 Python shell Python interpreter gets opened. Otherwise, go to the start programs, check where your Python is available within the installed applications. Python 3.2. The first thing what we see is ideally click it, Python shell gets opened in interactive mode. It opens in interactive mode. Can you see this three arrow symbol? 12 into 5. Yes. 60. So in this way, any statement you can type in and interact. Here, file, file, new file. Write your code here and execute the code here itself. Say I'm writing the code here. I pasted the code here. Here itself we can write. Here itself we can run. Run option is there here. So file, save. First save it. Sample two dot py right run run module run run module right ten plus twenty ten minus twenty ten into twenty ten by twenty ten plus twenty ten minus twenty ten into twenty ten by twenty okay so here itself we can write and here itself we can execute. Here itself we are writing the code, here itself we are running the executing the code. Previously, we used to write within the notepad and we used to submit in the command prompt. Writing and executing here at the same place, right? Yes. So what we have discussed, Python software foundation, Python versions, Python installation, Python execution modes, and developing the first Python application developing the first python application right so we discuss more into the basics of python in the tomorrow session same time at eight o'clock using the same link everyone can attend the session tomorrow also using the same link using at same time right fine so the course content what i'll be discussing right yes observe this why what is python features history applications versions installations flavors of python comparison between various programmings and the python operations modes of execution interactive mode batch mode editors ids data types constants variables inputs function type conversion comments escape sequences operators different types of operators IDs, different types of IDs, working with Anaconda, Anaconda distributions, Anaconda navigator, Jupyter spider, flow control statements, looping statements, strings in Python, string indexing, string slicing, string functions, string methods, string special symbols, right? And collections in Python, listed tuples, sets and dictionaries, 
list list properties list indexing list tracing list functions list methods list addresses nested list list modifications right tuples sets dictionaries functions different types of properties arguments default non default keyword non keyword variable length arguments are types of functions like lambda function filter function reduce function map functions modules in python using different working with different types of modules importing them renaming them reloading them right package in python errors and exceptions in python file handling object oriented programming concepts in brief regular expressions python database i will show you an installation of one database how to connect with database performing all the sql operations transaction management python date and time module os model operating system related module advanced concepts like iterator generator closures and decorators graphic programming excel working with excel workbook data analytics introduction to data science the important ds modules like pandas model numpy module matplotlib model in brief 30 topics will be discussed right in brief so how to work with different models some models i'll be discussing of data science some models of data big data some models of graphics some of databases and how to create our own modules so this is 30 topics it takes nearly 70 hours two to two end of month duration right yes and 5000 is the fee for only python python core and advanced right and the people who wants to go for full stack web development along with python the django framework the django web frameworks installations applications the django views templates the django models advanced concepts right and also ui technologies like html css in brief javascript in brief right yes yes that is what will be discussed as part of this like full stack web development right so just observe this for only python python core python advanced python application oriented modules so it takes nearly 70 hours two months duration the fees is 5k it's an offer batch and people who wants to go for full stack along with this python right full stack web development so they'll be given knowledge on web development courses like html i'll be discussing css in brief javascript bootstrap in brief plus the django framework the django framework right in this i'll be showing you i'll make you develop 15 to 20 applications creations plus rest api plus project this everything will be covered right it also takes nearly 60 hours two months and the fee structure for this is seven thousand so totally like four months 70 plus 60 130 hours nearly takes four months for this full stack two months for python two months for this and totally the fee will be twelve thousand actually but if you are doing with if you are if you are choosing this entire package for paying in a single right so it's ten thousand is the case if you are taking separately five thousand and seven thousand for this for taking the entire package it's ten thousand right yes <clears throat> And the offerings from our side. So every day session video, you'll be getting the recorded video of the session and classroom notes, soft copy of this no classroom notes and assignments and tasks to work with. And a WhatsApp group will be created for technical discussion, right? Even if you get any error, you can take the snap and keep it in the WhatsApp, right? So any queries from your side and the, the timings, the timings of this batch, make it clear, right? First uh, one week to 10 days. First one week to 10 days, it will be at 8 a.m. It starts at 8 a.m. After this 10 days, it starts at 7 to 7 a.m., right? 7 to 8. 
first 10 days it will be from 8 to 9. But after 10 days, it will be from 7 to 8, up to the end of the course. So make it clear that it starts at 7 a.m. after 10 days. One week or 10 days. Any queries from your side, anyone? So the sessions will be interactive sessions. You will be interacting with me. For every statement I type, you will be giving the, the expected output, right? Yes. So it's not like a 45 hours course. So it's not a 45 hours course, right? So like 70 hours Python course. And I said, I'll be showing you in people who go for web development, I said 15 to 20 applications, creations, right? So I'll show you like in the previous batch, if you just observe this, right? Django batches, previous Django batches, right? These are all the Django batches. You see the applications creations, Django apps, one apps, Django applications creations. See, these are all my project one, project two, three, four, nearly I said 15 to 20, right? More than that. If you take any batch applications, like 15 to 20 applications creations, step by step, I'll be showing you, right? Yes. Yeah, any queries from your side, anyone? So tomorrow also you can attend the session using the same link at eight o'clock, same time, right? Yes. Any queries from your side, anyone? Hello? So are you taking the session for the fast API and Flask as well? Yes. Okay. I mentioned right here, rest. What are the things? Django web development, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, this. Django framework, REST API. Okay. Okay. Right. So meet you tomorrow. Yes. Thank you all for your time. Okay. If I'm done with the queries, I'm signing off for now. Meet you tomorrow. Right. Yes. Thank you.